Oh, are we live? <laughs> Hi, <Dave. laughs> hey, everyone. It's Rita. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I was not prepared. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. She doesn't know how to turn her barker off. Um, hey, everyone. It's Rita uh, from Miss Rita to the Rescue. And I am here for Cricket Chat, today's Cricket Chat. We're going to be doing good morning, good morning to everyone. Um, we're going to be doing, uh, oh, yummy. <laughs> You're doing the keto thing. I, I'm trying to do that too, Susan, but I don't know. I think you have to exercise with keto. I think you have to exercise a lot. I don't know, because it seems like, it seems like, I don't know. I feel better, but I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not losing weight, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> hi, hi everyone. Um, let's see, today is Monday. We have a full week ahead. This is in the Christian calendar. This is considered um, Holy Week. And so uh, that's going to be a long week for the Christians in, in, uh, in our audience, including me. And then also I found out that um, Passover, which is a Jewish holiday mostly, uh, although it's celebrated a lot by Christians too, because um, it is part of the Old Testament. I'm sure you all know the story about why they celebrate Passover, because um, God chose to pass over them when he sent the plague. Um, so this is a genuine celebration of, um, of the Jewish people, which is where Christians came from, right? So, <laughs> um, so anyway, here we are. It's Monday. I'm going to be showing you this uh, pop-up card from uh, Design Space. I, of course, have taken my little liberties with it, and I am going to um, show you how to put it together. But I also want to show you where I found some of these other things that I added. So because it is the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, I went to my um, Bible verses and I found uh, an appropriate, uh, and I, I wish I had written down the um, book and verse, but I didn't. But it says, celebrate the um, Festival of Unleavened Bread because it is on that very day, this very day that I brought you your division out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting. So it's saying, uh, the passage is saying, celebrate this day over and over again as a lasting, a lasting memento for generations to come. So it's a demand um, to to celebrate. And so they do indeed celebrate. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, guys. So um, one of the things that they, that they do, hello. Hey, hey, come on. Stop it now. Stop it. All right. You're just a little too much. Um, is they celebrate um, the unleavened bread. They eat no yeast through all of Passover. Um, and so that hence the matzah, um, which is basically flour and water that they fashion into a uh, cracker. And so when I was growing up, I grew up in a town, I'm still in the town of Peabody. Um, there are a lot of um, Jewish people here. And so when we went to school during this week, um, it was all the kids had peanut butter and jelly on their <laughs> their crack their matzah crackers for their lunch and um i always remember that and i loved matzah i was like oh man i love matzah and they have also like soup that they make out of the matzah balls anyway um so i wanted to celebrate that with this uh with this great 3d card that features a star of david so this is called a star of david and it's in a, like a honeycomb as you can see i'm going to show you how to put it all 
together. I did um, also dispense with a few of the things here. And so I'm going to show you what I decided. This is a five by seven inch card. So let's go from projects. So I'm up here on the projects and you can see that there are so many projects. I almost like get a little bit uh, overwhelmed um, uh, of all the projects on here. And sometimes I think, oh, well, maybe if I did it this way or that way. So I do, I do like to change it up. So, um, so that's what I did for this one, of course. So this is the uh, project is called the Star of David pop-up card and um, it gives very good instructions. I've noticed that um, when you're putting these together, the instructions are really helpful because there are a lot of pieces. So um, we're going to actually, I hit the wrong button. I, I hit the button for make it and we're not going to make it because we want to customize it. So the way that this uh, comes out is obviously there is a nice envelope there. Let's ungroup this. I'm going to hide the envelope for now. Um, but the way that it is very plain, you see, this is going to be the outside of the card. It has a star of David there. And then on the inside, these are going to be, it's almost like a clamshell type of thing. So pretend that's the inside. And those two little strips here or slits here are for our star. And they're actually... Um, you can see there are two main pieces right here. These are the main pieces. And this is the uh, the sort of the base. And then you have these four um, pieces. Now, look closely and you'll see that some of these pieces have the slits, two at the top and one at the bottom. There's two of them. And then the other two, so there's four total that you're going to be putting in. And then the other two have the slits, all three at the bottom. Okay. And that's important when we're putting together this honeycomb um, to, to understand when we're putting together the honeycomb. But before we do that, let's um, think about a way that we can sort of jazz this up. So what I decided to do, just move these things over, is I decided kind of like what we did with the cross um, when we did the Easter uh, sort of blessing. And so I decided I was going to leave this plain. So I'm going to keep these cutouts with the Star of David, but I wanted to put a Bible verse here. And then over here, I wanted to just write happy Passover. And on the front, you could leave it the same, but of course, I don't know, like to leave everything the same. So I, what I did was I eliminated the Star of David here and then just put a pretty um, happy Passover. So here is the I did it in um, vinyl, but it's happy Passover there. And uh, I could have gotten even more elaborate, I suppose, but this is what I came up with. So I want to get rid of this particular uh, Star of David. So I have to detach that first because um, I can't do contour unless it is detached. It's like a single layer. That's how contour works. So once I have it detached, now you notice I'm not moving it. I'm just detaching it. Then I'm going to come down here to contour. You may not be able to see that in the screen green. So here it is, contour. Whoops. And um, what we want to do is hide all the contours except for the card. So there you go. And then we're going to select these two things and attach them again. Okay. So this is all set for our decoration for the front. So let's go to images and we're going to type in Passover. and see what we got. <laughs> Susan Whalen, you're, you make me laugh. Oh my God. Um, okay, so there's a lot of images. As you can see, we can choose any one of these. I think I chose this one. 
but um, this one is appropriate. Any of these um, that are appropriate uh, that you might want to choose, you can choose. Uh, these ones here have writing on them. So if you like that um, and let's see, let's just pick one or two. All right. And then what I did was I decided that it, it would look kind of plain to just have that uh, happy Passover. So I'm going to add the, um, I'm going to size it differently, obviously. And then I'm also going to add a background for this. So here we go. Here's the happy Passover. And you see that the blue on the letters get sort of, uh, you know, passed over. You can't see them too well. I actually like this one better. So I'm going to choose this one. Um, so I'm going to resize it first. And let's see, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here to offset and I am going to choose a quarter of an inch offset for that. It comes up in black, but I think it will look good in white or maybe even the light blue that's on the inside. I think light blue looks better. Um, and there we have our piece. Now this will cut out in three pieces and it's actually too big now. So I have to resize it now that I have that offset layer in there. But um, if you wanted to just cut this all out in gold, which is what I did, you would then take this um, image and then you would weld it and you can change the color to gold like this. So in case you want to do gold vinyl or you can do heat transfer vinyl, remember, um, and using your mini easy press, you could attach it to the, um, this little, uh, offset layer, right? So that's that. And then if you wanted to, like I did, if you wanted to, let's move this over, um, put something on the inside, then we would do a text. So let's just add a simple happy pass over to the right hand side. And then maybe we can go and find uh, a Bible verse if you want to. So we're going to go over here to text. Now text has changed a little bit. And it, it took me a little tiny bit of time to um, to figure it out. So I um, understand if you might be a little perplexed because of the changes. Um, it's a little hard sometimes with all the changes and not knowing about them. And I just thought that I would mention to you that there is a Facebook group. It's sort of like a, a read only group, but it's a Facebook group on the Facebook, on the Facebook that's called software updates. And I wanted to show you that. Let's see if I can get over to Facebook and see what's going on. So let's go to Facebook here. Um, but there is a, a Cricut software update group, okay, that you can um, join. So if you go to groups or you don't even have to go to group, you can just do up here, Cricut software updates. Okay. And see that comes up official cricket software news. That is what, um, if you ever, for instance, like right here on April 4th, they will tell you if there's going to be maintenance, they'll tell you what's changing in the rollout of new things. I find it useful. I try to share all of the um, things on my Facebook page, but I realize that a lot of people don't have Facebook, especially if those watching me from YouTube. And um, so that's just, uh, it's just something that you can't, uh, you can't see unless, uh, unless I tell you, uh, which I try to tell you things like that, but, um, but it, it's a good way to go to sort of heads up if you're missing things there. Okay. So, um, text. So we added text. Now you notice when you do text now, it comes up in a little box. Okay. And instead of the two boxes, like we used to have, remember the two boxes, one was sort of like an inserting box where you'd put all your text. And the other one was, um, the other one was what the text would look like, but now it's combined. 
okay? Um, so what we're going to do is just click on that text box and we can just backspace to remove it and then we can just start writing or typing. Uh, and so in this case, happy Passover, let's do it that way. And I want this to be writing. So I'm going to, I don't think you have to do this part, but I'm going to select it. Here we go. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to go up here to my fonts and I'm going to go to filters and choose writing. Now this will give me only fonts that are writing fonts. And I want something a little elegant um, here. So I'm going to look for something rather small that is going to look good. I forget what I chose originally, but it was a, it was probably like this one, chicken scratch, but um, nope, it was not chicken scratch. <laughs> um, so let me see that I can find it. Why does chicken scratch keep coming up? Uh, let's see. This one's all uppercase. So let's, how about this one? Flannel shirt. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. Um, and then I'm going to also go up here and align it to the center. And I might even, um, so there it says happy Passover. And what I might even do is you see how there's a lot of space between happy and Passover. I'm going to choose advanced and ungroup to lines. And the reason why I'm doing that is that I want to um, make it, closer and also so that it will fit. So I want to put happy closer to Passover than what it showed. So here we go. That looks pretty good. I am going to just grab it both and well and attach them. I'm sorry and attach them. Um, I should have attached them to eat to the background while I was at it. But here we go. Let's make it a little smaller. There we go. And then grab this and hit attach. You could do the same on the left hand side. And I wanted to show you a little shortcut um, with this. I thought it would be entirely appropriate to find a verse from uh, the Torah or from the Old Testament. So um, I'm going to type in Passover reference references in Old Testament. There we go. Okay. Passover verses in Old Testament. And you will see here um, that it will give you all kinds of different things. And, and um, there's a lot of information in there. So you might have to dig through there and find um, Passover uh, reference. But what I chose was the one that says... Um, about celebrating and I'm trying to find, uh, find the correct one, but let's say, um, no, oh, I think it was an Exodus. Okay. Um, and this always happens to me. Um, then on the 15th day of the same, Okay, so here it is. It's in Leviticus 23, 16. So I'm going to select this with my with my mouse, you see, and I am going to hit because I have uh, also because I have a, um, a a Macintosh. It might be different if you have uh, a PC, but you can do it. Um, and uh, we, we're going to do command C, which is copy. And then we're going to go back to Cricut and we'll do text. And instead of that text, we'll just go back and hit command V. And then here you go. It's in, it's in there. Now it needs to be, obviously needs to be, um, formatted a little bit. So we're going to just put a few, uh, then on the 15th day of the month, there, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I probably should move it, huh? Um, and mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, I need to make it smaller too. So this does happen, but it's, it's doable. We can work around this, you know? Uh, let me make it even smaller because I want to make it small. Okay, there we go.
So then we can just, on the 15 days, there is a feast of unleavened bread. And then we'll put a page, a new page. You shall have, you shall eat unleavened bread. Um, and then we're going to, let's do this. I think this is going to work. It's still a little bit big and I want to align it to the center and uh, bring it up here so that I can size it for my, uh, for my card. Now it still, it looks a little bit too small. So, um, so let's go ahead and add a couple of carriage returns here of the feast of unleavened bread to the or seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Okay. So there you go. And we can then make it small. Don't worry about it being too small because uh, the pens will write that small. And there you go. Um, and then all you have to do is position it and attach it. And then you're going to cut it out. And this is an easy cutout. It just takes a long time because the Star of David is very intricate here. So um, there's nothing I really need to tell you about cutting this out. Um, except that I accidentally left uh, too many. I don't need both of these. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And when we go to make it, you see I have, it's really just one and a half sheets of a royal blue and then one sheet of a light blue. And if you wanted to put this to be the same as the uh, light blue, you can. So you're just going to click on those triple dots and hit move object and move it here. Now remember when you do that, you have to sort of rearrange things. And that means that might have to rearrange some of our star outline. And if you wanted to make it all fit onto one 12 by 12 inch page, you might have to turn things sideways, which is what I'm doing here. And there you go. Um, just make sure that they're not touching and then cut it out. It will take you a while to cut it out because of all of the detail and, um, and let's bring you down here so I can show you how this goes together. So essentially, it's very much like the um, the the cross that we made uh, last week. I think last week it is like a honeycomb. You see that like this honeycomb and it goes together quite easily. And it's it's so that it can fold flat. And then once you have it all together, then you're going to take your pieces of the card the sort of the inside part where we put the saying happy passover and there's my bible verse and then what we're going to do i'm going to show you how to put this together but i just wanted to kind of give you the bird's eye view so you can sort of see what you're creating for me that's real helpful so we're not going to glue these parts in just yet we're going to take our um, star, our completed star, and I'm, it's already starting to come apart because I'm playing around here. Um, okay, here we go. Man. And let's just take this bottom part. So this bottom part, it's going to, as you can see, this is going to be this going here and this going here just like this, you see? And then it's going to allow us to fold. And we do need to glue this on here on the back. So let's go ahead and just glue this piece on here on the back so you can see. And of course my glue is not working. Ah! Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> Relax, Rita. Um, okay, so we're going to make sure these two pieces are attached before we go ahead and set these uh, pieces of the card down. So let's do that. Okay, so it's supposed to go like uh, this, just like that. All right, let me show you how this Star of David goes together. 
and also the front of our card. Let's see. I hope I have everything here. So there's our card, right? And the front here is what I did cut out is a happy Passover. I did it in vinyl and sorry, I went ahead and did some uh, pre-weeding of the inside pieces because I always have trouble with that when I'm on the video. I can't get my head right over it, which is what I need to do to weed it correctly. Um, and there are some squiggles on here that I was having a little bit of trouble with, but you could have chosen a different one, Rita, that had uh, that didn't have these squigglies on it. So <laughs> don't be complaining. It was your choice. You get what you get and you don't get upset, right? Um, okay, so while I'm doing this and putting together the Star of David, I will tell you if you're new or even if you're not new and you just need a reminder, this is Cricket Chat. So this is a daily show that um, airs on Facebook and also on YouTube. It's live. If you're brand new, please join the chat that's going on. There's a wonderful uh, group of people that um, chat with us daily and um, they share a lot of things. It's a great way to make friends um, and also to learn things because I don't uh, read the chat as I'm, as a lot of people know, I don't read the chat, especially when I'm doing something intense. And um, so a lot of people that have been here for a while are able to answer your questions and feel free if you have a question. As a um, thank you to my friends, that are subscribed. I do monthly giveaways of Cricut products. And we had a recent change in the program that's allowing me to give away more um, products. And this month is the second month we're gonna be doing it. This month, April um, 2022, I'm giving away 1,100 you heard that right, $1,170 worth, so that's the retail value, of Cricut um, products. And that includes one uh, one bundle of a, in a Cricut Joy, that adorable little machine that we all love. Um, and it has a bundle, so it's, it's an insert card bundle, so there's a lot there. Um, there's also a, an easy press mini bundle that Rhonda won last month, and Rhonda just got it in the mail. I think it was Rhonda that got it in the mail, and she was, she was very happy about that. Um, I think um, last month we also had some like everything materials um, bundles. There's going to be some infusible ink bundles in there. There's seven prizes in all. And all you have to do is go and put your name in. You don't have to put your name into each prize or anything like that. It's all going to be picked at the same time. So your job is to get your name in at least once. And you can do it up to once a day for everyone. Um, and all you have to do is follow me on YouTube. Oh, don't. Please don't um on youtube once you're following me and that means like you're subscribed and it's free to subscribe um once you're following me um then here we go there's our little saying there um once you're following me then uh you can come back and enter every day just by uh sharing a video or commenting or liking the videos. So you feel free once you've done that with any of my videos. And I've got like 900 videos um, in there. And they're all sort of this format pretty much. Um, 
once you've done that, you can put your name in. And if you're looking for the place to put your name in, go to the description of this video after I get off the live and you will find it. Now, um, some people seem to have a little problem with that raffle copter. And I will tell you this, that uh, raffle copter is a free, it's a free thing that um, people people like me use to give away things. It's fair. Um, and so it keeps away from you having to pick, which you guys know, I hate to do that because I want everybody to win. So, um, so Ravelcopter is kind of, it's kind of um, wonky, but it's free. And so that's why I use it because I, I you know, I'm trying to keep my cost low and just a one person operation. So all you have to do is go in there and there'll be two options. One is log in through Facebook, which I don't ever use. I just go to the one that says uh, log in with your email. And then I just put my, um, I put my email address well, I don't actually enter the contest, but you get what I mean. Put your email address and then also um, your name. Because the reason why we do that is sometimes those email addresses are not super uh, explanatory. And we all know that, right? I mean, my sister has an email address she's had forever diva taz um and that's from when we were in business together la diva bella so um so she has diva taz and it's like how do i know diva taz because my sister's name is Teresa ann zambella t-a-z so she goes by taz um so again put your full name in there and then at the end of the month we will select seven winners and then from those seven winners i will run those through a random generator and pick out the um winners of each prize so that it's as fair as i possibly can make it so i don't want you guys to uh question my tactics for doing things i don't play favorites i love you all and that's that's that. Okay. So let's put together this. Um, let's put together um, this Star of David. So there are three major pieces and that's this bottom piece you see, and that's going to make that square that we put there. It's sort of a square, right? Yeah. Um, and then we've got these two pieces that have footings. So the first thing that you do is you put these together like this, just slip them in like that. Okay. And then you can take these and fold at all the score lines. So there's, it's going to make a square. So let's do that. And then at the end, it has a little tiny tab. So we're going to attach that. Please do not. Please just don't. Okay, there we go. Um, and we're going to attach it like this. Okay. And then you can put those aside for right now. Because then we're going to take these very intricately cut uh, blue overlays. Now you'll notice I actually used different colors and this is crooked cardstock here this is i don't know what cardstock look at how yucky i ended up with a problem with my uh with my machine and i will tell you it does matter um especially for these intricate cut things i had this set at intricate cut but look at it kind of really messed it up this was not Cricut cardstock this was I didn't do that on purpose I just I just noticed it I accidentally grabbed it I gotta tell you I'm a little behind this week I usually post all of the um projects and um I am a little behind so <laughs> sorry um this week we're also going to be uh doing some more etching on glass 
uh, but we're going to color it using um, using a product called Rub and Buff, which I have to pick up at Michael's. So I wasn't sure that I um, that I could get it in time. So I I didn't post that. I'm also going to be doing a uh, Every Bunny Welcome sign that from uh and i was having trouble yesterday with design space does anybody have that happen to them i was doing also an easter egg happy easter banner and it was doing something really funky yesterday and i just said yeah i gotta quit this i wasn't feeling that great anyway i have a little bit of a a sore throat that i think owen gave me because he had a sore throat too. Um, but we both took to COVID tests, so we don't have COVID, uh, which is great. So I just have a little sore throat, and it could be all of the spring and stuff like that, allergies. Uh, spring allergies are bad for me anyway, and things are starting to sprout around here, even though the weather's been kind of odd. We actually had um, a hailstorm on Saturday, uh, and that was bizarre because, uh, honestly, it was just the middle of the day, and when I was doing my thing, I don't know what I was doing, folding laundry or something, and all of a sudden I heard this, like, crack in the sky, and then a bunch of what sounded like marbles. Now, we don't get hail here that often. Um, so it, it came down. It came down pretty hard for quite a while. And um, the people, like, collected it in buckets. I think Owen actually went out in it. And I'm like, why would you do that? Because it feels like, you know, little marbles hitting your head. But I did watch it. And I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so... There you go. So what I'm doing now is I'm gluing to these individual star pieces and the, the correct one. So see this one, which is broken, um, has the three slits here at the top. So I'm going to glue it to the three strips here. Um, and so hopefully it won't look as tattered as, uh, as it does now, because I'm going to be gluing it to that piece. We'll see. I might have to do it over. But I was in a hurry this morning. Um, let's see there. There we go. This week is also my birthday week. And I'm not telling you that because, you know, I want you to say happy birthday. I'm telling you that because on Thursday, I decided, since it's my birthday, um, that I was going to do a corgi project. Because corgis, you guys know, my favorites. And so I designed a little card that I'm going to show you. And I'll give it to you, of course, um, with the front and back corgi. This, like, this image here. I will give it to you, um, and it's a card. It's so cute. So I'm going to show you that one on Thursday. And that's our week. goes up pretty quick. Um, and then after the holiday weekend, we will start making... Uh, we're going to focus a little bit on flowers for a while because, you know, it's sort of spring and mom and all of that. So we'll be making some flowers. We're going to do paper mostly, um, but we'll do some other things. We're going to do some iron on and stuff like that. I actually have my friends over at the, uh, whoops, oh, come on. My friends over at the community farm are asking me to make t-shirts. So I will be helping them for that. We're going to make them double-sided. So once we have a design, I'll show you how it goes. I'm trying to decide on some good things. Okay, so 
let's see so now we can start putting this together so we have here our two pieces that we've slid in like this okay and then you'll see that you have two pieces that have the yucky paper <laughs> it looks not so great but oh well um here they have the slits on the top okay we're going to put those aside just for now and then we have two that have two slits on one side and one slit on the other so we're going to take this and this by the way all this information is on uh design space so you don't have to worry about it about uh, if you get stuck okay so like i am right now I'm getting a little stuck thinking about this why why rita why am i getting stuck thinking about this oh i think because i think oh i'm gonna have to go up here because i did it right just right before it came on let's go back go back just need to see the visual all right here we go so it says we did that we did that we did that we did that okay here we go this is the part so we need the two pieces that are right okay i was just getting a little confused so let's move down here sorry guys i guess i'm getting old and we're going to nudge this in here all the way down okay so there is that one then we're going to turn it around and we're going to put that long slit right here very excited because thursday after the show and sort of after school after school and work for Owen and my sister, we are driving to Ipswich, and Ipswich is the home of fried clams. I do not get to eat them that often, so I am going to get myself some whole belly clams. Oh my god, I love them! If you've never had whole belly clams, especially Ipswich, this is where they they fried, where they found or uh, made this, right? Um. You have to try them. Oh my gosh. I remember going when I was in college, going to Howard Johnson's. Remember Howard Johnson's? Um, they always had them on the in interstate to New York, upstate New York. They had a lot of Howard Johnson's. I think they don't only have one left in the world. But um, uh, I remember going there and like, just craving clams and getting the clam strips oh my god what a waste so sad they, what did they do with all those bellies that's the best part the strips are just like the stringy kind of uh, muscle the bellies mm. i know a lot of people think they're gross but honest to goodness so good uh, it just they're so expensive too they actually do clam digging in ipswich 24 7 or i should say 365 days a year okay so here you see what i did i put four the four sides in so there's the middle and then there's one two three four you see and it creates a sort of a square pattern and it closes and i'm just gonna make sure that they're all in there real good okay then we're going to take this piece and we are going to get it on here which sounds easier than it is but again no glue is necessary here so we're just gonna Sort of put this in like this. There we go. Okay. So you can see this is how it's supposed to look. I'll give you from the top down and on the side.
you dug for clams. It's fun. Clams can be very elusive. And you know, here it is such a, um, it's, it's a, well, at least when I was younger, um, you know, they let the kids dig, but it's, it's really an adult game because, um, you, you have to, they're fast. They go in. It's not like they're, they're just sitting there, mind their own business, whatever. And, um, they're pretty fast. And so, uh, you have to know how to find them, look for them and everything. And as an adult, unless you get a clamming license, you really can't clam. Um, you could be called, uh, by the, you do not want to be called by the, um, the, what do you call them? The water, what is the water police called? The game, fish and game. You do not, especially up here, you do not want to be called by them or called, you know, have to have to answer to them. I remember one time we were on um, my sister's boat and uh, there was a baby seal. Yeah, a baby seal um, in the Anasquam, which is a tidal river in Cape in Cape, at the Cape, Cape Ann. Um, and there was a baby seal, no mommy. And he was kind of like sitting on a, it was low tide. So he was sitting on this little like rock thing. And he was clearly like abandoned. Um, and everybody wanted to go over and capture him and stuff like that. But I remember saying, you know what, you guys, you got to call fish and game. Um, and you have to report it because by touching it, you could get in trouble. You're not supposed to engage with the wildlife. And they did. And they came and put him in a little, like a bucket and brought him probably to the aquarium, New England Aquarium, and rehabilitated him. And then they have this whole program. So anyway. Okay. So there it is. This is how it goes in. Now. Again, there's only the glue on those two tabs. So once you get this in, you're going to have to sort of train it a little bit so that it's going to fold correctly. And this one I have to train to go this way. Uh, okay. I'm going to make it so that it folds correctly. Mm. <laughs> Okay, it's going to fold this way. All right, so I'm going to do this again. Put this on here like this. There are four slits down here on the bottom. Cape Ann, which is the other Cape in Massachusetts. Everybody knows Cape Cod, right? But um, which we just call the Cape. And I'll tell you that... Um, that's pretty sad because Cape Ann, which is on the North Shore, which is where I'm from, um, is the home of Gloucester, which is the um, where fish sticks were born. You know, the Gloucester fishermen's uh, that's they're the folks that made fish sticks famous. And um, it's a really neat place. OK. So I'm going to please, please, please do this for me. There we go. Okay. So there it is. And hopefully it's going to pop up. Well, you might have to open and close it for a while. There we go. Ah! <laughs> okay. It's a little frustrating, guys. I think if I were doing this again, I would probably... Um, this part's easy compared to getting it onto the inside of the card. And I don't think you're supposed to glue it. I really don't, even though it's a little delicate. I'm a big seafood fan. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Although I'm not a freshwater fish fan, like salmon and stuff. I know it's supposed to be healthy for you, but honestly um 
give me the seafood from the ocean scallops and i love lobster owen is a huge lobster fan i once made him a t-shirt that said i'm just here for the lobster um and he loved that t-shirt that was when he was younger um and he used to wear my t-shirts okay so there you go i'm not going to try to close it again because i'm afraid i'm going to be fiddling with it so there you go there is this really beautiful star of david see it's it's very four-sided here and if you are uh you celebrate passover or even any jewish holiday i suppose but this since is passover this week um this is a great project to give to a friend who um who does celebrate or if you your family celebrates so there you go um so that is the project i wanted to also show you this is tomorrow's project um it is i know we're going to do etching again i got these for one dollar i went to the dollar tree last week friday or something and i picked these up and there's also a round one so there's square and there's a round it's about seven and a half inches and i thought this is going to be perfect for etching but i hadn't thought about the fact that it has this you know because it's a cutting board it has this sort of um texture on it so what i thought that i would do is i would do the etching and then come back and show you how to color it in with gold or even silver um and which which is just a cream i'll show you the cream that you use it's like not even a cream it's a wax but um we'll put that all in there and i will i can give you this file this file straight from design space and i just cut it out and you notice that they have these little feet here so um to to make it look you know to make it flat on the ground so i had to cut my vinyl to fit but it's going to make a really cute uh glass cutting edging etching board you don't even need to put it down to cut on it but you could leave it up like this or whatever so um we will do that tomorrow and then again just in case you missed it we're doing a sign that I mangled, but I'm going to, I tried to do it in, in, uh, paint and it did not come out well. So I'm going to do it in, uh, vinyl. So this every bunny welcome. And then we also have an Easter wreath, I'm uh, not a wreath, Easter banner. Uh, it's an egg shape, really cute. And it cuts on the joy. So if you like the joy, then we'll we'll be doing that this week. And then, of course, my um, Corgi, my Corgi project, which I'm not even going to show you because it's going to be really super surprised. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. I will see you again tomorrow. And um, don't forget to get your name in for the giveaways, okay? All right, everyone, take care.